actually doing in people's lives. This is expansion foam. I've had holes as the size of basketballs in um, attics, um, at my building, around plumbing. And do you know this fact about expansion foam? It may seem like it, do, it does no good. It seems like it's not doing anything, but an expansion uh, insulation can cover big holes like that. You may think that your words are small or insignificant. They don't amount to anything. But I'm here to tell you tonight that your words are expanding. They're growing. They're either building a person up behind the scenes or they are, are either turn a person down. So tonight, I want to encourage you to use your words in the right way. If I can have a title, my title will be this. Watch the words that you speak. Look at your neighbor and say, watch the words that you speak. It is easy to speak words. Do you know that there's an estimated that a person, people on a daily basis speaks 16,000 words per day on average? Did you know that? Now we all know that there's somebody who can either, either double or triple that or quadruple that, that they just speak and never stop talking. We know that. I'm sure we all know people who can do better than that. On an average, people speak around 150 words per minute when conversing. We are created to communicate. People speak in a variety of ways. How do, how do people speak? Name some ways that people speak. Go ahead, Mason. In languages? What about through text messages? Is that a form of speaking? What about in body language? Sign language, that's a good way. What about when your parents tell you go in there and do the dishes and you don't say anything, but you roll your eyes don't you know that's a form of communication also? Or if somebody <laughs> is talking, music? Music, music is another great way to communicate. <laughs> Mathematics. <laughs> what about when you put your hand up in a person's face and you basically just say, talk to the hand? All of these are ways that we use words. Your words, as the Bible says, can either build up or tear down. People speak with their fingers by typing or text messages. They speak with their body language. They can even speak with their hands or sign language. It can easy, we can easily say something. We all have something to say. We all have an opinion, we all have thoughts. We all have something that we can uh, say to one another. Our words flow out easily, just as easily as these guys came up and sprayed out this bottle. But the hard thing is this, that once it comes out, it can't go back in. No matter how hard you try, the same way Preston, who was motivated by a $100 bill, as hard as he tried to put it back in as small too, your mouth, your tongue is the smallest member on your body, but guess what? It can do more damage than any other thing. The Bible says it's just like a match. All it takes, have you noticed that a forest fire that has massive trees that's been there thousands upon thousands of years, some even hundreds of years, that all it takes is a small match and that whole forest can be burned down. It says your tongue is like a, a, a match. It can set a whole world on fire. One or two things can happen. You can set the world on fire in a negative way or you can set the world on fire in a positive way by spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as Gospel Lighthouse Church members, that's what we should be doing. We should be spreading the word of God. We should be spreading the gospel instead of gossip about people. We should be speaking in such a way that people who are, are, are in a dead state, they can get out of that situation that they're in and become who God has created them to be. I wanted tonight, is there anybody in the house of God that can say, I use my words in a way that it can make a person who may be drunk, a person who may be high, get sober all of a sudden. I use my words in such a way that I can be like, La be like Lazarus who's bound in grave clothes and all I have to do is speak a word and Lazarus come forth and he's loose by the words that I speak in my life, the, oh, the, life that I, the words that I speak over their life. I wanted tonight where we change the words that we speak over people. This is what Proverbs 18, 21 says. It says the tongue can bring life or devil. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences of their tongue. Another version says the power of life and death is in the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Our tongues are powerful. The words that we speak can bring death or life to someone. Have you ever taken the time to consider what that means? What does it mean? Every word that you say impacts someone's life 
in a positive or either negative way. It could either tear someone's heart apart with the damage that you said or builds that person's heart together with encouragement. A careless word spoken of in gossip, anger, or frustration can easily become the thing that someone never forgets. I had someone yesterday that were so close to me, a person I love dearly, who spoke a word through a text message. Now, this person didn't speak to me through the phone. Uh, this person didn't speak to me in person, but I could literally hear the person's words as I read the text message. My reply was, I was tempted to act just like they did, to reply back in a negative way. But I thought, the word says, let your conversation be seasoned with salt. So in return, for every negative word they spoke to me, I replied back intentionally a positive word. When they said, I hate you, I said, I love you. When they said, F you, I said, bless you. When they said all those different things, I gave a word for a word because I know that just like this expanding phone, before the night is out, you'll get a chance to see It'll almost fill up this whole bucket because even though its contents seem like that it's nothing, it's not powerful, it's expanding as we talk. Those words that were spoken on me at the time didn't seem like they was doing any damage. It hurt, but as the night began to progress, as I began to lay down and think about who the person was, it began to grow inside of me and the hurt began to fester and begin to bring up memories of the past, of what was said growing up, and what was said as a teenager, and what was said even as a grown up, and the words began to expand, 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 so to the point where I was at to the point of just crying out and depressed about what was going on. And then something quickened me. Aren't you glad for the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you? Something quickened me to say, which words are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the words of people or are you going to believe the word of God? And guess what? The word of God began to swell on the inside of me. The word of God began to expand on the inside of me. I began to say, who am I? I am a child of the most high God. I am the head and never the tail. I am above and never beneath. I'm going to believe the word of God. Whose report shall you believe? I know that's the word of a faithful friend, but you have a friend that sits closer than a brother and his name is Jesus Christ. I know the world may have written you off and told you that you will never amount to anything and that you will never be anything, but whose word will you believe tonight? I choose to believe the expanding power of the word of God. It said, oh magnify the Lord in me. Let the word of God swell on the inside of you. Let the word of God take over every word that's been spoken over you because his word has the final thought and his word will not return back unto him void. That means that God's word would never come to him and say, God, I couldn't reach that person. God, I couldn't heal that person's heart. God, I couldn't build that person up. His word would never come back to him and say, I couldn't do it. So tonight, whose word will you believe? Will you believe the words of a faithful friend that gives you a blow? Will you believe the words of a friend or an enemy? Will you believe the words of parents? Will you believe the words of people who have tore you down? Or will you believe the word of God? He said that you are a royal priesthood, a holy people. He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and ordained you to be a prophet. So who words will you believe tonight? Here's a few things that you can think about. Number one. Before you get ready to say something to a person, think before you speak. James 1.19 says this. It gives us a cause to say, understand this, dear, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. He said, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to rap. Quick to hear. Isn't it amazing to me tonight is this, a simple you may have heard this before, it may sound cliche, but God has given you how many ears? Two ears and one mouth. So it's indicating that it's more important for you to hear than it is for you to speak. Let every person be swift to hear. What is the Holy Spirit telling you? When you get ready to speak, ask yourself, what is the Holy Spirit telling me? This is a challenging inspection. I don't know about you, but I often think about what a, I plan to respond to a person or say to a person even before they're finished talking. 
Being quick to talk is human nature. Being quick to listen takes work and patience. You want to achieve this skill, you want to achieve this skill overnight, but it's important to, to strive toward it. Before you speak, ask yourself these questions. Why do I want to say this? Number two, what do I hope to accomplish by saying this? Number three, will these words encourage someone's heart or will they rip it apart? Number four, are these words, uh, are these words I will be glad I squeeze out? Like kind of like that bottle that squirts out all the expanding foam? Number five, or will I regret them having trying to scramble and put it all back together? You have to ask yourself these questions. The same way like a person, how many people in here have ever sh uh, shot a gun before at any time in your life? Do you know this about a gun and the bullet? You may intend for it to hit one target, but a bullet has no name on it. It has no direction. It's gonna hit anything in sight. And once it leaves the chamber, it's out. Once again, you can't retract it. You can try to run and get in front of it. The only thing that's gonna happen is if you're quick enough like Superman, it's gonna hit you. But once it's shot out the chamber, you can't retract it back. Your words have that same type of, some guns only pierce you a little bit and you may live. But some guns like Jeremy told me had will probably tear your head off, right Jeremy? Put a hole in your size of a, a crater. So you have to be mindful of the attack that you have on people. Some things that you say may be easy to brush off of someone, but some things you say may literally t make a person feel like that their, 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 their chest is caving in or they're about to explode. So use these as a way to think. Proverbs 15, one says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. In a simple uh, fly version it says, a gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. Let's take time to think about how you can respond before you speak. Number two, encourage and uplift others with your word. Proverbs 16, 24 says, gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Imagine that our words can be like honey, bringing someone's sweetness and healings to others. This is a pow powerful reminder of positive force of our words and how powerful they can be in the uh, retrospect into someone else's life. Number three, take time to apologize. As people, this is one of the hardest things to do. I think people will rather eat nails or drink glass for breakfast or walk probably miles upon miles before they can just simply apologize. Do you know that that is probably one of the greatest sins that we as people have and that's pride when it comes to simply apologizing. Simply telling the person, this is what we, 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 we do. Most of us, we secretly go to God and say, I was wrong for that. I'm sorry. Tell them all about it. But the people on the other end, guess what we do? We don't tell them. Because in pride, this is what we say, I sinned against God. So I made it right with God. But the word says this, before you come to the altar and you present your gift and you remember that you have ought against someone else. Before you present your gift, that means before you come to this altar and you cry out and you want God to heal you for what you did, forgive you for what you did, he said, first go back and be reconciled to your brother or your sister. That requires you to put your pride aside and say, you know what? I was wrong. I'm sorry. Husbands, he especially said to us, he says that if you don't do this, your prayers can be hindered. Oh, that takes it to a different level. That's right, Brother Jeremy. No more sleeping on the couch for us. We may need to just get up, go apologize. My sister looking on his head like, get it together, huh? <laughs> but we as people, we have to get this. It's so simple to make things right and to allow it to fester. Days, just like this phone, if you don't apologize, it festers for days and days and it begins to grow and grow. And what happens? It grows in a negative way. People are bitter. People are frustrated. People are resentful because you allowed it to expand, expand, expand when all you had to do is simply say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Those are how many words? I'm sorry is how many words? Two. 
but ne neglecting to do those two, speak those two words can cause 10 years, 20 years, 30 years of pain. There's people who are dead and gone who never got a chance to tell you, I'm sorry. That's why it's so powerful for you to forgive even if forgiveness is not sought. Because after they're gone and they didn't give you those two powerful words, guess what happens? It still pollutes you. It grows and festers on the inside of you and you go through life hating everyone else because someone else refused to give you two words. I got two words for you tonight. Uh-huh. Maybe three, maybe four, maybe five. But it's a simple word that I want to tell you tonight. God loves. It doesn't matter if no one else loves. God loves. He loves you. He cares for you. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. How about we do that tonight? Somebody tonight may just need to apologize. You may have said things that was destructive, but true repentance turns around a death sentence. If you don't believe me, read about it, Hezekiah, who the word of God, once the word of God is spoken, it will come to pass. He was given a death sentence. But because he did something that most of us don't do, the death sentence was prolonged for a time. He still was going to die, but it was prolonged and extended. He said that once he repented and sat close and ashes, the same man who came to give it and walked away by the time he got so far to almost about the end of this TV, he had to turn around and give a decree that you shall live 15 more years. And the sign of this is that I'm going to do a miracle. I'm going to make the sun go in the opposite direction to show you that I can turn things around. Repentance, saying you sorry, even though the damage has already been done, saying you sorry can turn around a death sentence. So how about we tonight just say simply, I'm sorry. Put your pride aside and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. The fourth and final thing, watch what goes into your mind. The things that go in with envelop always come out whether you realize it or not. You are what you eat. If you eat cheeseburgers all day, you're gonna be a cheeseburger. <laughs> you drink beer all day long, you have a beer belly. Whatever you put on the inside of you physically, it affects your physical body the same way with your spiritual mind, your man. Whatever you put on the inside of you will eventually come out of you. You can say, I didn't mean to say that. But the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Out of the abundance of the heart. That means that, it doesn't mean that you are an evil person because something evil comes out of your mouth. Doesn't mean that you're totally good because something good comes out of your mouth. But it says, out of the abundance, Meaning this, for example, if I have a hundred pennies in my pocket and one quarter, what is the greater probability that I will pull out a penny versus a quarter? I have an abundance of pennies, so eventually what's in abundance will come out. If you put in the abundance of your heart, Facebook cussing and uh, rap that talk about having sex and uh, shooting people in the chest and you watch movies that always talk about uh, showing sexual reference or you watch commercials or anything that's talking about smoking, what's in the abundance of your heart would eventually come out of you. But if you meditate, the Bible says this, blessed the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. When you meditate on the word of God, when you put the word of God on the inside of you, I seen a man one time, he was a holy roller. I mean, one of the best um, uh, men I could see in the, in the gospel. He was 85 years old retired but yet was still working the AG. We was working and we was building on something and all of a sudden a ladder came out of nowhere. It fell off the wall and hit him on the head and all of a sudden he said, hallelujah. Somebody else would have said, holy, blanky blank. But he said, hallelujah. It didn't come by accident that that happened. Guess what? He had put the word in him so much that when even under pressure, what was in him came out of him. 
I wasn't at that level yet. It would have hit me. I was a young man in Christ. If it had hit me at the time, I probably would have said something different. But him, because he had put the word in him over so many years, what was on the inside of him came out. In the early 90s, there was a group of guys from Luxor who basically, in the street life, we looked up to. These two guys, one guy goes and both of them goes inside of this gas station one night and one of them had just got paid, had a $400 check from American Greetings in his pocket, had also just received his income tax check. It was around January time. All of a sudden, while he and his friend are in the grocery store, he pulls out of a gun for no apparent reason, robs this guy, robs him at gunpoint, got the money. You would think after he got the money, he would just leave out. But all of a sudden, he shoots the man in the back of the head. The man didn't die, but both of those young fellas both spent a combined of almost 20 years in the penitentiary for a quick reaction for no apparent reason. But everybody who knew these young fellas knew that they loved this one movie called Juice. You ever heard of Juice? Anybody in here ever seen Juice? Jeremy, a few people. In this movie, Tupac Shakur, who all of a sudden they, they decide to rob a store. Tupac Shakur in the movie, his name was um, Bishop in the movie, he does the same exact thing. They go in, they rob a store, and without no reason, he shoots a man in the back of the head, but in the movie, he kills him. These guys has watched this movie so much, day and night, till they believed that they was just like these people. Do you know that they have reports of people who play Grand Theft Auto. In, in 2008, a young man goes and kills someone uh, for no reason, and then he, when they found him, they found him inside of a shop eating food the same way he does in a game. Whatever you put on the inside of you, whether you believe it or not, it begins to affect you. You can go and stay in New York, and after two years, because you're around those people, you're gonna begin to start, talk real fast. You can go to the deep down south, and after a few years, you're gonna talk like someone who's a country bunking. You may not realize that it's having an effect over you, but the things that you listen to, the things that you watch, the people that you hang around with eventually has an effect over you. If you hang around people who speak negative all the time, don't be surprised if you speak negative all the time. If you hang around people who are always gossiping, on the phone for hours and hours. Don't be surprised if all you want to do is go and search after gossip. But the flip side of this tonight is this. If you hang around people in Gospel Lighthouse Church who are full of the Spirit, full of the Word, full of life, full of peace, full of God, then guess what? You too will be full of God, full of peace, full of life. And guess what would happen? We would see people in this church and this church would be filled with God's glory in his presence. I wanted tonight, with every eye closed, no one looking around.